Hello and welcome to Further Drive and today's video is all about collecting a new car. Now, before you uh, go mad in the comments and on my Instagram and like Facebook pages, basically have a go at me for not mentioning anything about buying a new car, it's not mine. This video today is because I am joining uh, my friend Martin, who we did the Lamborghini Huracan video with a little while ago, picking up his uh, second car. Uh, a bit more of a daily, um, but still mad nonetheless. I'm not gonna tell you what he's actually bought right now because the details, he's actually been keeping a lot of us in the dark. I think trying to make it a bit of a surprise when we arrive. Um, but all I do know is that we're now gonna get in the car. When they arrive, we're gonna get in the car and head up to Urban Automotive in Milton Keynes and pick up his new ride. <laughs> See you guys in a sec. So I'm now sat in this monster of a car, the Urban Velar, with Martin, uh, who you recognise from the Lambo videos. First things first, this thing's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a little, uh, saw a small bits and pieces of it at the Goodwood uh, Festival of Speed last year, and was blown away by it. And like, the extra tweaks and bits and pieces that Urban have done have made it a whole new level. So I think definitely the way to go. It's definitely uh, set it apart a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, Changed yeah. It from the standard. So, I mean, most people know what the standard Velar is, but if we know, because, I mean, you haven't advertised that they modify, but they don't really obviously outline every little thing they do. It's, it's because you can you can effectively go in there with a blank sheet and tell them what you want, yeah. um, and they'll kind of make it, um, so the options are fairly endless. They'll respray the car for you if you want it a different colour, they'll colour code everything, they'll change whatever you ask for, basically, they'll do. Nice. Um, so uh, you can really make it a little bit special, you know, definitely different from your standard Range Rover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first, I think the f most noticeable thing, at least from the outside when you first look at it, is the humongous front bumper. Yeah. <laughs> and all of the carbon. Yeah. So I mean, it just shines in the sun, which looks incredible. The carbon was something that I thought, you do a little bit and then you think, oh, I'll do that bit and then I'll do that bit and you just end up doing it all. So <laughs> yeah. Effectively. The bumper's completely different, they're obviously colour-coded. Um, all the grills, side vents, bonnet vents, mirrors, splitter, spoiler, um, everything's carbon. Which you can have just the standard spec, but you yeah, know, yes. thought, yeah, might as well. Um, and then obviously the wheels are different. Um, the only thing they leave the same on, on the Velar, and again you can pimp it up if you want, but is the interior, because it's 
it's lovely as it is. It's so yeah, um, yeah. it's so nice. So um, yeah, I'm, I think the outside really really makes a difference. Really sets it apart. And you went you went for the three liter diesel. Yeah, yeah. It's an everyday. I mean, they do uh, about four or five different engine options. Um, and I figured I'm using this as just a daily, basically, to run around in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, three liter diesel. Um, it's got it's got a fair whack of power anyway. Yeah, I mean the torque for overtaking. When you're accelerating, just in these bits and pieces, immediate, just that such low end, that's got such such pulling power. Yeah, it's really nice. Well, I was chatting to um, Simon, the guy that that owns Urban, and when I heard the petrol, I was like, because mm, it had a Miltec on it as well. I was like, oh, maybe I should get that, but he was like, look, yeah, it sounds cool, but at the end of the day, if you're using it for a daily and you've got your you know, supercar at home, yeah, use yeah. that at the weekends, the diesel's got loads of grunt, loads of pull, it's a really nice drive, it's really smooth, yeah, so yeah. it's the way to go, really, so um, I got the top spec diesel one just just for the power, but it's not about the power, really, in this car, it's uh, yeah. just about the cruising. It's not like you're lacking of power in your other car. No. <laughs> <laughs> Land Rovers have never been, I don't know, the newest generation of Land Rovers with the standard line they've done, I think always look very functional very and uh, very practical, which is great. But I've always felt, and even with some of the older Jags that have been made by the same era, have been a little dated. Whereas this, like the interior on the Velar, I think they've just gone. They've just gone all out, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, it's like a whole new level of everything. They've gone with similar with like, the gloss black plastic which is great, I think that looks really nice. And then the fact you've got three LED or LCD screens, and then you've got interchangeable controls on dials. Uh, yeah, the, the interior tech level. I think they've just gone next level on it. And, and really, I think if you look at like the discos, the sports and stuff like that, they're just, they're, they're quite an old car now. They've yeah, just yeah. had sort of like facelifts and stuff, whereas the Velar was like their, their brand new, you know, not flagship, but brand new, you know, this is a kind of statement car in terms of what we can do moving forward. Yeah. Um, and so they've worked a lot on the tech and, and modernising the interior and everything works and it's nice and the sat nav's good. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the the resolution on these is, you know, just completely high def. I mean, God knows what displays it is, but it's almost like retina sort of level. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really, really well done. And um, I think it's just, it feels like an era class about it, if yeah. that makes sense. So yeah, I think yeah. some cars you kind of get in and they've got a bit of tech, but it's not quite there. Whereas yeah. this is like, it's got to be the future, definitely. I think they've, it feels to me like, as you said, like they've already had those other cars in their range, disco sports and all those kind of things, even the variations in between all the different models they've had. They've had them for so long that they're almost like they're in a tunnel where yeah. they can only go forward, they can't change direction a little bit. Whereas this, because it was a totally new design, totally new kind of car, they were starting from scratch. As you say, they've just had so much a blank canvas. Mm. Um, I mean, their, their whole design of the car was supposed to be between a Sport and, and a Vogue, really. But this, when I said I was getting one to Greg, he was like, oh, no, no, don't get one of them, get a Sport, get a Sport. And I was like, have you actually seen the Velar? Have you seen them side by side? Yeah. And he was like, no, I haven't really. And they're... Although it's supposed to be smaller, they almost look like the same size on the outside. Yeah, it's, um, it is the shape and the, the rear, the, the, I wouldn't say pointy, but the way that it, the lines come together towards the back end, you get that air, it's still a big car, like you know, no one's denying that, but it, it, it does feel a bit more sport, a bit more compact. Yeah. And then, I mean, when it's in access mode, it looks like properly mean. It was, I actually had to use that in a practical sense last night. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I went out for dinner, parked in a multi-storey, and it comes up on here, you can you can have a look at the vehicle dimensions. Right, okay. We were about 30 centimetres up, uh, well, we were just under where you were supposed to be for the maximum height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we were like, oh no, we're going to have to turn around, because yeah, I think it was like 2.1 and we were like 2.3 or something like that. Oh, no. um, but then I pulled up the vehicle dims, put in the low mode, and it dropped down to like 1.9 or something. So we were oh, below. Oh, oh, oh. But 
just like on the back of talking it's a big car when you're pulling into a multi-story and you've got the real tight channels for the curbs either side I was like no my wheels are you <laughs> as you can see you, you cannot know. you have no idea where these wheels are whatsoever so no, it's it definitely is. something I've got to get used to yeah yeah um, so it although it's like quite nimble and fun to drive it, it definitely felt big going in that car park I think yeah uh, personally it's nice to see a few bits and pieces that have come through from some of the high-end Jags that I've seen because mm. obviously Jaguar Land Rover so you've got the same feels across to this yeah you, you get the same high quality like the gloss black plastic the the buttons on the windows and stuff they're just similar makes me feel like home <laughs> in a, a very different car but you probably I, know how half this works more than I do <laughs> no, I don't have three screens <laughs> So that is the end of today's video. I mean, the Urban is just a beast. The Velar already looked incredible from Land Rover, but Urban's modifications, all the bits and pieces, all the carbon, the extra front splitter, all the, all, basically every little thing they've done to it looks incredible. Uh, it was really nice to meet Lenny and all the guys down at Urban. Uh, it was, we were a bit running a bit tight for time for bits and pieces, so I didn't really get much of a, a chat. I obviously didn't feel comfortable rushing, sticking the camera in, the, you know, in everyone's face, kind of capturing all those bits and pieces. But that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.